Now, still talking about the upcoming off-cycle polls in Nigeria, we'll now be joined by our correspondent, the very same one who packaged that report, News Central's Abuja Bureau Chief, Amadine Uyi. Uh, thank you so much, Amadine, for joining us on the news. Now, Amadine, uh, can you possibly provide us an overview of the specific concerns that have been raised by stakeholders regarding potential violence, especially during the upcoming governorship elections in Kogi State, by Elsa and, of course, Imo State. Okay, if you have been following the build-up to the polls, uh, several civil society organizations uh, a few days ago, even political parties, uh, a few days ago, the Social Democratic Party came out to raise alarm uh, yesterday we had uh, the presidential, the governorship candidate of the PDP, and several key stakeholders have come out to raise an alarm over the violence in the build-up to the polls. Uh, a few days ago, Nigeria's electoral body also came out to say its 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 preparations are ongoing. It has reached an advanced stage, but it is worried that uh, the uh, cases of violence have continued to be reported. Now, if you look at the three states, you look at Kogi, you look at Imo, and you look at Bayosa, unfortunately, those are states that have always had, uh, always had a history of violence during election. If you break it down to Bayosa, you see that the riverine uh, areas are always very heated because of uh, the lack of adequate security in such environment. Also, a video that trended a few days ago where we saw the deputy governorship candidate telling supporters, uh, encouraging supporters to unleash violence and throw opponents into the sea. They will go to a state like Kogi, which is just uh, a border state to the Federal Capital Territory. If we recall what happened in the last elections uh, in 2015, where we saw that several people were killed, a, a, a woman leader of a political party was even burnt inside her house. You see that Kogi too is a source of great concern. Then we we'll go to Imo State, where since last year we have seen arms, uh, unknown armed gunmen attack INEC facilities, attack the uh, INEC officials uh, during the registration process. And just the uh, bullet, the story you read before now saw that armed thugs attacked the labor leader, the president of the Nigerian Labor Congress. So indeed, it is a source of concern. All right, uh, Amadine, also, uh, when fears arise like this, especially um, in lieu of the upcoming elections, a lot of times they tend to mop up security, uh, especially in these regions. Now, how do you assess the current level of security presence in these states and if and the effectiveness in ensuring the protection of the voters come the days of the election if you judge the uh, independent nigeria's electoral body uh, based on uh, the off-cycle elections it has conducted in the past, not the general election. You tend to say that uh, uh, there, should not, there should not be any cause for concern because it seems the electoral body uh, does better when it performs off-cycle elections. But also have it in mind that the electoral body does not control the security apparatus, does not control the security agencies. I know uh, that uh, uh, New Central has covered several meetings in the last two week, in the last two weeks to one month, where the electoral body has engaged with security agencies, engaged with the Office of the National Security Advisor in a bid to get the assurances that there will be adequate security personnel during the polls. These assurances have been given. But the fear is, uh, if nothing has been done in the last few days where we have seen uh, attacks, uh, political, uh, political talks, attack opponents, uh, state governors try to shrink the electoral space and the security agencies did not do anything, 
then indeed there is a source of worry and there is a source of concern. But we are hoping that the assurances that the National Security Advisor and others have given, we will be able to take it to the bank and we'll see that improved security deployment not just being deployed, but effectively trying to curtail the action of miscreants and political talks. Okay, uh, Amadine, finally, before we let you go, in your own opinion, what exactly will the impact of uh, the presence of thugs and miscreants have on the overall credibility and fairness of the election process, bearing in mind that there is already a bit of doubt in the minds of Nigerians when it comes to the electoral process and the electoral body at large? Now, that is very true because, first of all, let's go back to the Liberian election that uh, took place last month. Uh, election observers and election monitors said that they had a minimum of 70% voter turnout. We have never achieved this. In Nigeria, we have about 90-something million voters. If you look at the figures compared to the last election, you see that the, the current president won with about 8 million votes. The two other leading candidates that followed got six and uh, six million votes. That is, so we had about twenty something uh, million voters in the last election. When you compare it to about ninety percent, uh, ninety-one million, that is approximately uh, between almost uh, a little over twenty uh, twenty percent of voters. Now, for an election that that was for a general election that there was so much awareness, so much assurances. But now you are having off-circle elections where voters are already seen talks on leash men. If for the last election we have only a bit over 20%, then definitely these figures will fall drastically. And when you have an election where you have less than 20% of voters coming out, the big question you will ask is that is that election truly a reflection of the people? So when talks are giving freedom and free reign to be able to do what they want to do, they, input, they invite fear into the voters, and voters at the end of the day do not come out to vote. And then you cannot fairly say that that election was, is creditably the, the will of the people because you have less than 20% of uh, citizens coming out to cast their votes. All right, uh, Amadine Uyi, thank you so much. Uh, Bureau Chief, uh, NC in Abuja, thank you for joining us on the news. Uh, you're still